We are now well into the countdown at approximately three minutes before liftoff. All systems are reported in excellent condition at this time. Pressurization. Go, Atlas. Go, Centaur. Atlas Autopilot, go. Centaur Autopilot, go. Launch Director, go. and three seconds. As shown by the animated diagrams in the monitor, the Atlas Centaur separation has occurred. Centaur cutoff. Surveyor is injected on its lunar flight path. Separation. And a report that the landing legs are extended. The surveyor is now in space. Sixty-three hours after launch, Surveyor 1 was only 1,000 miles away from the moon, with the speed increasing as the moon's gravitational attraction beckoned. Vernier ignition, retro is now firing, ignition looks stable. Falling steadily, 63,000 feet, 3,500 miles an hour. Now at 30,000 feet, retro burnout confirmed. The vehicle was supposed to enter a, a fixed rate of descent. So that happens. 28,000 feet, 425 feet per second, 24,000 feet. Falling steadily. Down to 12,000 feet. 10,000, all signals normal. Surveyor reported in excellent condition, all signals good. 1,000 foot mark. 800 feet, 600, 400 feet, 200 feet, 100 feet, 13 feet per second speed. At a certain distance above the surface, the engines are all supposed to shut off. And then it's supposed to drop to the surface. And the engines all shut off. And you could hear a pin drop. It worked. We're down. It's still transmitting. Surveyor 1 touched down at five miles per hour, a mere one second off the intended landing time. For the first time, an American spacecraft had achieved a soft landing on another celestial body. Surveyor 1 operated for six weeks, surprising engineers by surviving a bitter cold lunar night. In all, the sturdy lander sent back more than 11,000 images before its batteries ceased to work. Surveyor 1 now rests where it landed in 1966, telling us of its presence by casting a silent but long shadow on the lunar surface. Six more surveyors were launched over the next two years, providing a treasure trove of science about the moon. Although two of the missions would fail, the increasing ratio of success to failure demonstrated that JPL was clearly learning from its past mistakes. And NASA had the answer to its question. The lunar surface was solid and suitable for landing by the Apollo astronauts.